Welcome back to the Ball Traveler's journey to semi-retirement. We're now in week five. I'm Dave. I'm Susan. And today, and this week we had a lot going on. Uh, I was out of town. I went up to Flagstaff for my company. Uh, it was 50 to 70 degrees and it rained a lot. Uh, but I took the truck up into Flagstaff. Uh, Phoenix is at like 1,200 feet elevation. Flagstaff is over 7,000 feet elevation. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Flagstaff is the gateway to the Grand Canyon. Uh, you can get to the Grand Canyon within 45 minutes of, of Flagstaff. So that's where you go if you want to go to the Grand Canyon. But the, the truck drove perfectly. It was great. Uh, up and back, up through the mountains, I didn't have any problems. Uh, I actually filled the truck up again and spent $150 on diesel and uh, diesel exhaust fluid because we only got a half a tank of diesel exhaust fluid when we uh, bought the truck and we were down to a quarter tank and that's not something you want to let go out because it'll put the truck into limp home mode for these newer trucks. But you know, with a 50 gallon fuel tank, I expected to be making that large of a purchase and then we're budgeting that into our travels. You know, we're only planning on traveling uh, long distances, like two or three days a month probably. So, you know, if we have to fill up twice, uh, you know, a, a trip, that's still good. And, you know, we're looking at ways of making that cheaper for us. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we make decisions on that um, in, in our coming weeks, we'll go ahead and tell you kind of what we decided to do on that. All right. And let me remind <clears throat> everybody, the truck that we did purchase was a 2021 Dodge Ram 3500 Dually, and it does have a crew cab as well. Yep. So pr pretty big boy. And, and it's a diesel. It is a yeah. diesel. Uh, and then while I was up in Flagstaff uh, playing with work, uh, Susan started selling things for us. We have a lot of collectibles and stuff that would take a lot of kind of lead time. So we wanted to get some of our bigger collectibles out and uh, on the marketplace uh, just because it might take a little while longer to sell. And in some cases, like so for some of your collectibles, we have to do it on payment plans just because, uh, you know, they're a little higher priced. Right. Uh, and, it, you know, that's part of what you have to think about when you're going to be selling. We are downsizing. We are not going to get a storage unit. So we literally have to fit everything into the RV. And right now we have a 3,000 square foot house full of me, Dave, yep. two dogs, and a lot of stuff. So again, like Dave mentioned, anytime you go into this, you need to think about what you need to sell. And, and I think a lot of people think furniture, but things like our collectibles, they take the lead time. Mm -hmm. um, I need time to get them listed, get them pictures made. Uh, and then my buyers, most of the time, are gonna want layaway. Um, that's just the, the circles that I'm in. So uh, I would try to avoid that whenever possible, but that is uh, how it works in the, yep. the collectibles that I, I personally uh, yep. buy. Um, but right now I've spent most of my, my time on uh, eBay or Facebook Marketplace, or honestly, I spend a lot of time in Facebook groups. So uh, again, with your collectibles, there's probably a group that is tailored towards your collectible. So I'd really suggest going onto Facebook and looking for a group. And usually there's a sales group that might be a little bit separate from a discussion group. Uh, make sure you read the rules. But that's where I've done a lot of, of my sales. Also, surprisingly, Instagram. Yep. Uh, I was really I surprised was by that. that. I, I have sold quite a bit on Instagram. Um, so it's, it, there's a lot of options out there. And, and each thing has their own pros and cons. But one of the big things is you have to also factor in the amount of time it takes. It literally takes time yep. from you and materials to do mm -hmm. things like take the pictures, post them up, get them boxed up, find the yep. right box, um, figuring out the shipping. Heaven forbid you have an international buyer. Just yep. don't. But all that takes time and energy, so factor that in. Um, sometimes it's easier just to sell in bulk. Yeah, uh, about 90% of our kind of generic anime, loot crate, Funko Pops, Figmas, that type of stuff. Uh, we took to a local uh, store that sells collectibles here in Phoenix. And, you know, we've about half of that we've taken. The other half we were kind of on the fence because we're not getting rid of all of our collectibles right now. Uh, we will be taking some with us because, uh, you know, having some of our geekdom and having some of our collectibles are important. But we're definitely looking at 
one, will this travel well in an earthquake prone environment, <laughs> AKA a trailer driving down the road? Uh, and two, you know, does this have a lot of meaning to us? You know, is, is it something uh, that means something to us? You know, I'm keeping, you know, a few anime collectibles. Uh, I'm keeping a bunch, you know, most of my Marvin the Martian collectibles. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we also need to figure out where we're going to store it. I think you're keeping some Harry Potter. You know, I'm keeping my wands and my robes for Harry Potter. Right. Um, and I, we are keeping some of our cosplay costumes, right. too. Right. And like you said, I'm no. keeping some of Harry Potter. And, and one thing I'm into is ball-jointed mm -hmm. dolls. Um, I'm keeping one doll. I mm -hmm. used to have 17. So, uh, honestly, I had friends out on the East Coast mm -hmm. that were watching Instagram and saw me selling. And they were starting to think they were going to have to mm -hmm. have a... Um, in a, a intervention intervention for me yep. uh, because they never thought I would sell my dolls mm -hmm. so uh, that's been a big a big yep. commitment that I'm putting towards our, our mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. and uh, you know also this week while I was waiting Flagstaff we received our fifth wheel hitch for the truck uh, and for those uh, that might not remember from week four when we discussed this when we ordered it uh, our truck came with a what's known as a puck system so that you could either put a gooseneck uh, a hitch in there or a fifth wheel hitch and since most travel trailers are designed for fifth wheel hitches we went ahead and pre-bought uh, a fifth wheel hitch that will work within our travel trailer or mm -hmm. within our truck excuse me um, so when I came back from Flagstaff we went ahead and installed it uh, and I put it together I did have to run out and get a torque wrench because my torque wrench only went up to 80 foot pounds and I had to torque it to 100 foot pounds uh, so and I, I invested in a, in a decent quality one because this is something I'm going to have to, to re-torque for safety reasons. I'm going to have to re-torque it like once a month uh, or like every trip. Just check and make sure it remains torqued at the correct mm -hmm. specs. Um, and, you know, this is not the most heavy hitch because I was a little bit weight conscious because, you know, the heavier the hitch you put into the truck, uh, the less payload you actually have, capacity you have. So that affects the trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is still a high quality uh, hitch. Uh, designed you know it's the OEM it's pretty much the OEM hitch it's just I bought it from the manufacturer and I don't have the Dodge kind of logo slapped on it it's the actual manufacturer of that hitch All right and <clears throat> also you have to be weight conscious because mm -hmm. you have to consider that yeah. you have to be able to install yeah. it and take it out there sometimes mm -hmm. we can't have the mm -hmm. hitch in there yeah. uh, again we've been selling so some of our bigger items like furniture we want to be able to, yeah. to deliver that if possible yeah. so we've had to take the hitch back out yeah. Um, and between the two of us, it, it was very yeah, doable. It's, it's doable. Uh, you know, it's, it's very easy in, very easy out. Uh, one of the things I'm looking at is how I'm actually going to kind of lock the hitch into the truck itself because right now it just has uh, catch pin or safety pins in there. Uh, I think I'm going to replace one of those safety pins with a lock, simply you know, like a padlock. Uh, simply to, so that somebody can't just hop in the back of the truck, pop the pins and take the hitch out and, and walk. It'd be fun to walk away with it, but you know, if you got two or three people, it wouldn't be hard to walk away with it. And it probably would not be an uncommon sight at a campground or something like that. And, you know, it'd be a little bit more uncommon if it happened on the street. Uh, and I'm not planning on like putting a tonneau cover or anything on the back of the truck. So uh, we're not really, you know, there was, we're not going to hide it. So I want to make sure it's secure. Uh, but it went in without any problems. Um, and then uh, as the weekend came along and I came back from Flagstaff, we started looking at fifth wheels again. Uh, uh, and one of the first things we did was um, we went to the places, the consignment lots and the dealers that we had looked at before and looked at what their current inventory was and then started noting and taking video of each of the uh, trailers that we were interested in. Uh, not so much to put up onto YouTube, although we might make a video of that at some point, but it was more so, you know, we were actually going over kind of uh, what the weights were, you know, what the gross vehicle weight, what the dry weight was, uh, what the payload, you know, the tongue weight was, you know, how long it was, what year it was, what options it had, uh, you know, and all that stuff so that we could come up and uh, figure out which one we wanted. And out of that, we made a spreadsheet and we'll link it in this week's uh, down in the description. Uh, we'll put the spreadsheet down there and uh, also as we go forward in the weeks until we actually find the trailer uh, you know we'll keep that spreadsheet updated or keep linking in there so that uh, as we talk about it you can actually go and look what was on our spreadsheet uh, this is a google sheets document uh, so it'll be read only when you see it um, but you'll be able to look at it 
And so, you know, we started a spreadsheet of kind of everything of what, you know, what it was. Um, and as we kind of refine this a little bit more, we'll kind of go over in more detail exactly what's in that spreadsheet and what we're, you know, kind of what the fields were and what they mean to us. Um, and then, you know, we started looking at RV Trader also. We started looking at Craigslist for like private sale uh, RVs. Um, we thought we had one. Uh, and, you know, we were sitting there and, and Susan, you sent it to me. Uh, it had been posted for two hours. I looked at it, and by the time we got a chance to reply, not even 10 minutes later, no. it was gone. It was gone. The post was deleted. <laughs> yep. That's how mm -hmm. crazy the market is yep. right now. So um, I'd, I'd had, yep. before Dave left for Flagstaff, yep. I'd had some very blunt conversations to say, if I mm -hmm. needed to make a move on a trailer, I, you know, yep. I need to know that he would back me on that. You know, he'd probably be lucky to get um, some pictures, yep. but I wanted to have the ability to make that decision on the spot if needed because that's the way yeah. things are going right now. And, and this is not uncommon for us, I will say. I have actually bought a house with her back in Virginia, and I almost bought a second house with her back in Virginia. Uh, the second one fell through because of inspection issues, but, you know, there were, there were two houses that uh, you know we purchased out here or we're going to purchase out here in Phoenix that she hadn't seen prior to me putting an offer in on it so you know that's part of our relationship and kind of you know we've been married for over 15 years we trust each other uh, you know to make the right decision for both of us uh, right. and so you know, that's kind of the level we have in a relationship. I don't recommend that for everybody. No, no. But, you have to yeah. have that ability to say, yeah. even if if something goes wrong in, in the future, yeah. both of us are ready to make a decision, and we're always making the best mm -hmm. decision that we can at that point. And we both believe that. So that means you don't blame each other if something goes wrong later. Yep. So uh, that kind of wraps up week five. That's kind of where we are right now going into the 4th of July weekend. Uh, and at this point, um, you know, I want to ask you to please consider subscribing, uh, hitting that uh, the bell notif or button so that you get notifications when we post new videos. Uh, and then also, you know, if you like this video and want us to make more, please consider hitting that like button uh, or the thumbs up button on there down below on the screen. And, you know, please put a comment if you would let your spouse buy something multi-thousand dollars that you're eventually going to move into without your your knowledge. Or do you think we're crazy? You know, let us know. We want to know. Because our friends certainly think we're crazy when, you know, uh, when we talk about this and the fact that, you know, she may end up buying a trailer if I'm away for, at work or something. Or I may end up buying a trailer if she's away, you know, at work and can't get to it and we need to move on it. So uh, please let us know, and again, thanks for watching. Tune in next week for week six of our journey, and let's see where we are during week six. Bye!